Let's pray. We're live. Okay, we're going to say this again. Good morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, as we come into your presence this morning, Lord, we're going to just thank you, Lord, for, for so many things this morning. Lord, as, as we come before your throne, how sweet it is, Lord, that, that you climbed up on a cross, Lord, that, uh, that our sins are paid for. Lord, you didn't have to do that for us, but you did. So this morning, Lord, as we come together, Lord, let us keep that as our focus. Not only did you climb up on a cross, but Lord, uh, you came into this world, Lord, and we're celebrating that sort of today too. Lord, in a manger, Lord, you were, you were plopped into a manger, a feeding trough, Lord, the king of all kings. And as we approach this Christmas season, we want to remember that you came in to be as lowly of a man as, as, as you could, yet you were the king. So, Father, this morning, let us remember just how awesome, how mighty you are. Oh, Lord, my God, when I, in awesome wonder, consider all I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe is pleased and sings my soul. Great. 
great you are, Lord. every week that we always have. We've got Sunday morning service, which is now. We've got the adult Bible study. You don't have to be an adult uh, to go there. Uh, it's it's on the... Uh, yeah. What's that? That's what most of us are. Okay. Okay, we've got children's ministry. Is Janice here yet this morning? No, not yet. Okay. Okay. Um, but she'll be here in time to handle the children. We've got every Wednesday the, the Bible study. Now, what's this adult Bible? Don? What Don? What? So you're the one that teaches the adult Bible study. When? Uh, yeah. According to this, I just teach a regular Bible study. You get all the adults. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I usually don't do this. I have other people do this. Um, Board of Directors meeting will be coming up this Wednesday. By the way, everybody's welcome to attend the Board of, of uh, Directors meeting. That's just where we vote how to spend your guys' money. Uh, you can't vote unless you're on the board, but nonetheless, everybody's welcome to attend if you want to come see how we're spending your money. We spend uh, it on bugs. Bugs. <laughs> well, Gio's not here. <laughs> <laughs> Women's Fellowship. Uh, this week should be marked on your bulletin there. This week will be canceled. Okay, there'll be no women's fellowship. Uh, I believe that's when the party is for the food pantry. Food pantry, uh, and so just a lot of things going on that particular uh, Saturday. So we've canceled it. We've got uh, the woman study. Where is Carl? Or she's not here yet. Okay, is it going to continue? I imagine I haven't heard any word that should be on for that. With that, uh, as you see, as we work on down, as you can see, we've got Wade Hammond and his beautiful wife sitting back there taking over for Sandy this morning. Uh, and of course, most people here know Wade, right? This is like his church away from church. So <laughs> he's gonna get a chance to sing here. I'm gonna get out of the way get through this business uh, here's here's an important thing our Christmas service this year will be held on Saturday not Sunday don't come down on Sunday morning I won't be here I'll be home uh, with my two little grandbabies and kids so uh, December 24th um, at 5 30 p.m. we're gonna have a Christmas show do the Christmas message do some Christmas songs we'll have cookies and uh, a bunch of other stuff here. Uh, bring the kids. Uh, we'll most likely have presents for the kids as well. Well, oh, the 21st, 21st. It's not on here. But the 21st. Yeah, oh, way down at the bottom. The 21st will be right here on. Uh, we haven't come up with a time yet until tomorrow night when they vote on the time. But somewhere in the afternoon on the 21st, we're giving away toys. And. We've been collecting them here for quite a while. We have quite a few toys, really nice toys. So if you have kids or know of kids, families out there with kids, bring them here. 
uh, the afternoon of the uh, 21st and we'll be giving away a lot of toys. So that's being handled, of course, by the American Legion, but it'll be here. With that, let's see. We didn't put a prayer request in the bulletin this week, uh, but stay with me here. Let's, let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, as we come into your presence this morning, Lord, we're reminding ourselves that uh, you are our God. We're reminding ourselves, Lord, that there's not much that we need to do in this life uh, that's more important than accepting what you did on the cross. We're reminded this morning, Lord, that uh, we are sinners. And because of that, our sins had to be paid. We're reminded, Lord, that you came as a, as a baby child into this world and it was proclaimed that today the Savior has been born for the entire world. So, Lord, we're, we're remembering all these things this morning and thanking you for it. But, Lord, you say that if we have anything that, that we should ask, that we should come to you, Lord, cast our burdens before you. And, Lord, we have a prayer list, and we have urgent prayers on this list. First and foremost, Lord, we've got our good friend Joyce, who's, who's still in, in a home right now, uh, trying to recover to get back to her regular home. So, Lord, we just lift up Joyce and, and the nurses that are taking care of her. Lord, that uh, you would get her back home to Chris and, and make their life normal again, Lord. We've got Shirley with us this morning, Lord. And uh, we've been praying for her, and she's sitting. Where'd Shirley go? Right there. Ah, there you are. She's behind me. Thank you, Lord, for, for bringing Shirley here this morning. And Lord, as we go down the list, we're reminded too, Lord, that our good friend Rob isn't here with us. He's still recovering from the procedure they had done at Stanford University. So Father, we're, we lift up Rob. And Lord, as we go down this list, we lift up all the people that are on this list, Lord. We, uh, we know that when we come to you in, in the morning or in the evening, at that time of our day when we bring our prayers before you, Lord, that you see this entire list. These are people who have asked, Lord, that we should pray for them. So, Lord, we believe that you listen, we believe that you hear, and we believe that you will do. So, Lord, as we come into your presence this morning, we thank you for the opportunity just to share our, our deepest thoughts and our uh, love that we have for one another. Lord, as we into this prayer, I want to lift up our country to you, Lord. This country has a great need of you right now, and I know you, you're seeing what's going on. And Lord, tops on that list, Lord, I lift up our policemen. I lift up our firemen. I lift up those people who lay their lives down daily, who go through horrendous things that they see uh, that they, they have to live with, Lord. So I, I lift up those people that are out there on the front lines fighting for us. I just ask, Lord, that you bless them and keep them all safe. And Lord, come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If I could get the deacons to come forward. <laughs> Seems I say this every week, we don't need any money. Okay, we're doing well with money, but that's not what this is about. This is not about getting your money. This is about you getting the blessing from the Lord. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, and uh, he does command us, Lord, to give that what he has placed on your heart. So if God has placed a certain amount on your heart, I recommend you put it in. Again, if he hasn't placed that on your heart, let this bag pass from you. 
We don't need any money. We need the giving giver. Or the blessed giver, I should say. So Lord, as, as we pass this around this morning, Lord, we ask that you bless the heart of the giver. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> every week. Things seem to go faster when we have a guest. <laughs> hey, you guys, most of you know Wade, so I don't have to do a lot of introduction. Uh, Wade came to us almost 11 years ago, and I heard his name being bandied around the, the area, you know, and I thought, ah, uh, somebody, somebody like that would never come to our little church. We were still over at the school then. We didn't even have a building. But I contacted him, and he said, yeah, I, I, I like humble people. I said, well, we're not humble. <laughs> Actually, we're very proud of our humility. Uh, <laughs> no, he came over, and he's, he's been coming ever since for 11 years now. And he's become a good friend, him and Kathy. Uh, he still owes me a steak dinner. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm one who forgives, so... But doesn't forget, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Wade is uh, a country western gospel singer that uh, tours all over the place. Uh, and he's, he's had some hit records out there. He was nominated and what year was it? 2015? 2015, yes. 2015, he was a uh, country western gospel singer of the year. So we're blessed to have him here today. He's allowed Steve and I to play with him. Um, <laughs> so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Wade Hammond and Kathy Hammond's doing what Sam uses. Oh, Steve? He's back in the corner. Yeah. There he comes. Hey, it's been a privilege all these years. Uh, I feel like I've known you forever, and uh, but we love you guys. We really do. It just, it, and we fly home the December the seventeenth, which is this upcoming uh, what Saturday? Yeah, we fly home Saturday, and we've been out here for two and a half. We we waited to the last of the tour to do the best church of the whole tour is right here. This is the last Sunday that we're here. And, uh, but uh, I've used these, these fellows here uh, for some, some original songwriting and, and a song that's going to be in a, in a two songs are going to be in a, a movie. And, uh, and I've used, uh, Wayne has stepped in and uh, played in several, several shows that we've done and, uh, and I appreciate that. You've got a lot of talent in this church and uh, we love you guys. This is going to be mostly Christmas. Let's have a, a good time celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead. Go back. Whoops. Just little boy. 
precious little boy. Mary was the first one to carry the gospel and the news brought joy, sweet joy. The shepherds watched the flocks by night and nearly fell asleep. Another lonely quiet night watching all those sheep to the choir of boys Shouts of joy. Good news I bring for Christ the King is Mary's baby boy. Mary was the first one to carry the gospel in the His glory wrapped in swaddling clothes, the meek and lowly one with his baby boy changed the heart to all who can believe. What the prophets told has come to pass, the virgin has conceived. Mary was the first one. What a gift that is. You was born in Bethlehem that day. There was a star and a light to pack to where you lay. Rich and poor, they came from far and near. They'd all heard the reason he was here. He was the son God sent to one and all. Put on this earth to hang there on that cross. Born to die so he could leave. So we can leave. We have the first 
We see that Santa Fe train going around the mountain there. It's beautiful when you come on the way here or up, up in the Cayman area and you see it coming around the mountain. Uh, and it just reminds me not to get on the wrong train, which is the, especially the long black long train. Black. Go ahead, you know what's going to play. Oh, mm -hmm. 
you know they, they followed the light. I saw the light. If you know that, we've seen that. We had to throw that in there. I saw the light. We could throw it in. We didn't saw it. So endless life filled with sin I wouldn't let my dear Savior in And Jesus came like a stranger in the night Praise the Lord, oh, I saw the light I saw the light, I saw the light kids at the time. A few years ago, uh, we were on our way down to Gulf Shores, Alabama, which is the beach area, and it was in the summertime, and we told Madison and Tanner, uh, we said, I'll tell you what, if you want to go with us on vacation, we'll end up on the beach, but you've got to go with us and do three or four concerts, and, and they were all church concerts, and and before we get down to the beach, we were going to be in Louisiana, and they would drive down through Mississippi, and they ended up in Gulf Shores, Alabama. And they were all excited. They said, yeah, I can't wait, you know. And we said, that's going to take about a week before we get down there. It comes on some off nights. Or it might take it a week and a half. But so finally, after about the third concert we had at churches, our grandson Tanner began to grow weary. And uh, he, <laughs> he came up to, to Kathy, and she was sitting on the front row, and, and the pastor was getting ready to call me up. It was like Wayne. He said, well, Wayne's... Uh, we've known Wade, of course, I'd not known him for a while, but this particular pastor, and he, he was getting ready to introduce me and have me come up, and so Tanner ran up to to Kathy, and he, he calls her Mammy and me Dada, and he said, Mammy, I have a question to ask you. Uh, she said, well, hurry up. Uh, Dada's about to get up there and sing. He said, how many times is Dada going to have to keep telling people about Jesus before we get down to the beach? <laughs> <laughs> And she couldn't believe her ears, you know. She said, well, why don't you go ask him that? And so, uh, it's, he said, I will. And, and so I'm getting ready, you know. And, and the pastor's saying, well, Wade, uh, Wade, get ready to come on up here. And uh, and so Tanner was pulling on my shirt. He said, Dada, I have something really, really important to ask you. And I thought, well, okay. I said, it better be important, Tanner. I'm about to hop up there. I said, can he wait till after the service? Or what? He said, no, oh, it's important. And I need to tell you right now. And, and I said, well, all right, go ahead. He said, how many times are you going to have to keep telling people about Jesus before we get down to the beach? And I couldn't believe my ears. I thought, oh, my gosh. And, uh, and I said, I can't believe it. I said, what would you say? He said, how many times do you have to keep telling people about Jesus before we get down to the beach? And at that time, the pastor said, come on up, Wade. And uh, I thought, well, I can't go up now, you know. And I said, hold on, pastor. I said, I know there's people here and they come out I said, I'm sorry, I've got to wait just a second. I said, just keep talking up there or something. Just, uh, 
That's easy for pastors. Yeah, I said, tell a joke or something. I don't know, just uh, <laughs> tell the gospel or whatever you, what the Lord tells you. I need, to, I need to talk to Tanner for a minute. And so I sat him down and I said, Tanner, uh, let me tell you why I think we do what we do. And it was a wonderful time to share the gospel with our, with our grandson. You know, God opens the doors for us many times when we don't always expect how he's going to open the door. And we want to open it ourselves, but sometimes he'll open it in a different way. And when that opportunity comes to us, it's good to, to jump. It might be your only opportunity. I don't know. And uh, so I shared the gospel with him. And it just reminded me of this little Christmas story, the greatest story ever told. Go ahead. <laughs> A woman and an angel A promise and a song A work to grand free man To hold A tax long and a journey A stable and some strong This tale is the great story ever told. Oh, sing glory in the highest. He has come, my great Messiah. Come bow before this awesome mystery. Mighty God in prayer. You're a lonely nature, rose, and it's still the greatest story ever told. A hillside and some ships, a blaze of blinding light. Angels singing carols in the cold. Eternal revelation to men as dull as stone. And the still greatest story ever told. Try to do it, 
It's your grace that gets me through it. Thank you, God, for blessing me today. Thank you for my family and my friends. We all like to get together every now and then. It brings me peace of mind to sit and talk about old times. Thank you for my family and my friends. Thank you for this land you've given me The rivers and the mountains and the trees I can see your reflection in all of your creation Thank you for this land you've given me Do you thank you this morning? Is it good to you? Thank you, Lord God, for blessing all of us only the way you can bless us. And as we always say, I know the number one thing that I can truthfully say is this. Thank you, God, for giving us your Son to die for all the sins that I have done. When they nailed him to a cross All my sins were lost And when I didn't know where to turn I looked there and you, there you were and I turned to you Thank you, Lord God You saved me, gave me eternal life You're worthy of all praise You know, we were, we always had these stories that, that on the road type stories that we go through some time. And, uh, and so on our way out here, before we came out here, actually, Ketsu, we, we need some new stories we can share with people, but that are things we go through experiences in on, our, on the road or whatever. And uh, and I said, well, the only problem about that, Kathy, is every story that we share is where we almost run off a cliff in the coach or something. And, and she said, well, we need to go through something else. I said, no, we don't. We don't need to go through it. And I said, I don't want to share the pain and the misery and the agony. And, uh, and I'm joking now. Praise God. He's been with us. Whole, but uh, we were trying to think of these stories, you know, to share. And, uh, and so I didn't. I said, well, I don't have any stories. I'm just going to have to be plain and no story. And then she said, well, we'll see why. So I'll tell you what did happen. A pretty neat little story. I don't think I told you guys about it since we practiced together. So, uh, we were about two weeks before we flew out here in September. Uh, we, you know, we flew out. Well, actually, we flew out to, I didn't even share that, I don't think. If I did, forgive me. Uh, I'm ADD. And, uh, but we flew from Birmingham to, to California, went on the Hawaii, and did a three-week tour in Hawaii, and then we came back here and toured here, and we been here ever since tons of places and then we fly home on December uh, this is the fall tour this year instead of a winter tour but anyway we, we were in an antique store in Pelham Alabama and I was walking around camping I love to go to this store and I was walking through there and and lo and behold this lady rose out from the back a steamer trunk and I don't know if you've ever seen a steamer trunk but it was man it was the most gorgeous I couldn't believe it. I thought my goodness look at that trunk and now Kathy was on the other side of the store and I said, my goodness, I've never seen anything like that. It was an old, old, and I said, look, how old is this thing? And, uh, and the lady said, well, we, we had it open. And look, something came off the Titanic. And uh, she said, we had it open, then we, uh, it went shut on us, and uh, we don't have the key to open it back up. She said, but I did see an authentic, uh, this, uh, the papers or whatever that thing. And I said, hold what? She said, it was 1800, and is it 92, Kathy? 1892. Uh, I thought, man, that thing's older than the Titanic. And, 
And so uh, I said, how much do you want for it? And she told me what she wanted, and I thought, you know, that ain't bad at all. And so meanwhile, these, these women come over there, and they were just mesmerizing. So they began to, they just moved me out of the way, you know. And they <laughs> gathered around that thing, and, and I thought, why can't you see the trunk now? Because they're circling around like sharks, you know. And uh, So one of the women said, go get Martha now. And this lady began to go find whoever Martha is, and, and uh I thought, Martha must be the one that's going to buy this thing. I don't know. And so there comes Kathy, you know. And I said, Kathy, hurry up. Get over here. She said, what? And I said, hurry. Get over here before Martha gets back here. She said, <laughs> she said, who in the world is Martha? And I said, look, I think Martha's the one that might buy this trunk here. And so uh, as I started giving her quick information about it, she said, whoa, what? And I told her what they wanted. She said, well, why don't we get it? I said, well, that's why I'm calling you over here. I said, let's get it. Let's get it. And I said, all right, I want it. I want it. And, uh, and meanwhile... I could hear those women coming. It's like a stampede of horses coming through there. I mean, the kid said, now don't you say a stampede. I'm not calling women horses. I'm just saying that it sounded like, because one of the women had heels and just going and, 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 uh, but it really did. All of a sudden they come up and they were so, you know, I was so, so glad, you know, because they had pushed me out of the way earlier, you know, and, and so we get it. And, uh, and so we're rolling it up to the, they're rolling it up on this big old thing. And, uh, and I said, so the only thing you got out of here, and so I'll back up a little bit. I had just seen a movie where they found a chest that looked just like this thing, on, and they and they opened it up, and it had silver and gold and all that stuff. And I thought, man, this thing, I said, look, what else was under the, in this thing? She said, well, I don't really know. There was a layer there, and we didn't open that up, you know. And I thought, man, this is it. This is it. And I was like a little kid, you know. I would open this thing up, and... and uh, Kathy said, well, there's no key. I said, well, bust it open. She said, we're not going to bust that thing open. It's an antique. And so uh, so this lady said, well, there, there was one thing that we found over here that was inside this thing. And she handed it to Kathy. And, uh, and so Kathy looked at it. She said, Pittman Junior High School, Middle School, 1976. I said, what? And she said, Pittman Junior High School, Middle School, uh, 1976 and I said look I was at Pittman Junior High School in 1970 so she began to thumb through there I told her what bread I in and, and lo and behold she found me in that book and there's my picture in that book now, in, in 1892 thing, my picture's in a book and, and she said look at you wait you look horrible look she said look at your hair it was back in the 70s you know and uh, it was long you know and I had these big old, before braces, I had these big old buck teeth and smiling, you know, and, and uh, she said, well, you're like Wolf Van I said, well, he was popular back then. And, and, uh, it was crazy. And, uh, but, and all of a sudden, I began to tear up. I thought, my goodness gracious. I said, God knows how to show you something. You ever heard those, those saying you can't see the trees because of the forest or the forest because of the tree? Well, that's what, exactly what happened to me is, is, uh, is not only I was also saved that year. Uh, it was the year that I I gave my life to Christ and the Lord revived the Holy Spirit started letting me know hey look I made your picture what are the odds of finding your picture in the steamer trunk it's not even the same town you grew up in it's got your little picture in there the year that you got saved the year you came to Christ and the Lord let me know wait you're the treasure okay I bought you and that was when you changed you gave your life to me I have you now and you're the treasure. You just do what you do. And it, every one of us, you're the treasure. And it just, uh, it, you're more valuable than anything, any gold, silver, or anything like that. You're the treasure that God can use and does use to reach other people. And uh, and I just I was astonished. I really was astonished. And, and so we took the steamer truck home and we put it in the house uh, next to our bed in our bedroom uh, just to remind me what, what God did. And uh, a friend of mine, Gary Heiser, wrote this song, Ruby's an Emerald Town. I met him at an award show. He was an older guy up in his 80s. And, uh, and I said, look, what were you going through when you wrote this, this song? He said, well, wait, I was, I, he said, I was going through a rough time in my life. And uh, he said, I didn't want to live anymore. I'd lost everything. And I had all these crop. And all, he said, I had to start over again with my family. And, 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 uh, and he said, I just... Uh, when I got set, he said he got he had to lose everything to gain everything. He gave his life to Christ, and the Lord reminded him that he, that he's still valuable, that he could use him, and he still uses this very day. And he wrote this song, "Ruby's and Emerald." Listen to the words. Go ahead. 
he wrote it, he asked me to record it actually. Actually recorded it right here. Yeah, we we'll recorded it right here actually too. That's a big factor, amen. <laughs> Rubies and emeralds, diamonds and gold. Can't hold a candle to the value of your soul. God knew that when he created you. Moon and stars and all their splendor can never hold the grace you're under. God knew that when he created you. Yes, he knew that when he created you. I asked, Lord, how can it be that you hold a redeeming value in me? After all I've done to push you away. You see, I've done some of this, a whole lot of that. I used your name in vain in a drop of a hat. I told those jokes and laughed about that. My heart heard you say, well, I knew that. I broke the mold. I broke the mold. I broke the mold when I created you. You see, you're one kind, there'll never be another. He's sticking to you closer than a brother. And he's here to say his truth. That he loves you. He broke the mold when he created you. You see, you're one of a kind, there'll never be another. He's sticking to you closer than a brother. And he's here to say his truth that he loves you. He broke the mold when he created you. He broke the mold. He broke the mold. He broke the mold when he created you. You see, one of a kind, and there'll never be another. He's sticking to you closer than a brother. He's here to say his truth that he loves you. And he broke the mold when he created you. Rubies and emeralds, diamonds and gold, can't hold a candle to the value of your soul. Can you imagine Mary that she was told that God found favor in her to deliver her to deliver his precious child? Can you imagine that, women? That Lord told you something like that, how awesome that would be. Oh, 
on a stone with his hand. Did you know that you made him boy? song that uh, we were in the middle of writing and then these brilliant guys just came and just added to it and it ended up being a beautiful beautiful song and but I'll, I'll tell you what happened God began to, to put us in places and Kathy and I were we get invited to sing to to be, to celebrate recovery things uh, they'll actually come to these concerts all over the place and, and Kathy does uh, ladies conferences all over the country and does them at these late these uh, celebrate recovery things and uh and so we were at one in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and uh, right there by the university. And a lot of people there were the people are going through some struggles and addictions, and uh, and some great things happen through that. They really, they, they really do. But we were sitting there, and uh, and they were getting ready to call me up, and uh, but they were doing the chip system before they do it to where if you if you've been uh, dry is a word or clean clean mm -hmm. word, if you've been clean is a word, uh, then you, you you get a chip or something, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and so I heard this person say, I am a, I'm going to use this for example, I am a, a cocaine addict. That's just what they say. Uh, but I've been uh, clean for three years and and uh, they give them a chip or whatever. And and then I hear somebody else say something like that. And then I, I, uh, the lady that was over this particular one, that we go to several, she wanted to speak to Kathy uh, after the, it was over where she said, I have something I've struggled with I need to, to talk to you about, Kathy. And so he got over in the corner, and I just let him talk. And, and the lady came up to Kathy and said, you know, I, I, I'm going through a, a struggle right now. She said, I've been clean for five years, five or six years, and uh, whatever it was, she was whatever addiction that she was struggling with. And I don't know what to do because I'm just tired of tired of." Have it. And she'd every she, and every time she would introduce everybody and start the whole thing off, she'd say, "I'm what her name is," and then she'd say, "I am this addict." And and I used to think, "Well, are you really?" And mm -hmm. and so uh, it began to bother me. I thought, "Wait a minute, now, wait a minute. I don't know that you 
But my goodness, when if, if I've been struggling with something in my life and and I know that Jesus has gotten, I've come to Jesus, I don't want to keep dragging that thing around like a, a chain and just keep and look back down there and say, hey, this is what I am. And it's like, it's almost, to me, it reminds me of Satan just saying, don't you forget who you are now. If you're if you're a bad, bad alcoholic or a, some type of drug addict or whatever addiction it is, then you just remember that you're, you wear that tag proudly. And I uh, thought, no way in the world, buddy. And, and, and so it bothered me. And so uh, I began to think about this little tune that you guys were, that, that these guys helped me finish. And, uh, and so we uh, wrote this tune, and it actually ended up being a, it's going to be in an upcoming movie series when they get it out. They're in the middle of production. It opened the door for another song, too. But it's just a reminder, the name of the song is called Breakaway. And uh, if you're struggling with something in your life, whether whatever it may be, there's nothing that God can't handle. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me and that he can deliver us. We don't have to keep dragging that chain around and that he can... He can break us loose from anything. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He can make us out of dust. He can spit dirt and and throw it in our eye and make us see, you know. And uh, so he can uh, listen to words. Break it. This is a, actually going to be an upcoming movie real soon. Uh, and uh, thank you guys for coming up with the chords and the things like that that you brilliantly did. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. That we changed. That's all I did is change the key to it. And. Uh, we started out. They, I came here. They helped me write the tune of this thing, and uh, and so we went back to record it. And I thought, man, this is too high, and so we had to lower it down a little bit because uh, this guy here is used to uh, high rock people, I guess. <laughs> and, and I said, look, I'm sort of in between. I'm not. A, I'm not a rock and roll person, and I'm. A, we need to go down a little bit lower. So I threw a surprise on them, and so they had to lower it a little bit. So this is them playing on it. This is very instrumental. And uh, God can break us loose of anything. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. As we go into the last song, uh, aren't these guys good over here? Praise God. It makes all the difference in the world. Uh, I love having you. You have a talented church. And, uh, I'm used to yelling at them. Uh, <laughs> do you want to do that? you want to get through before you do the last song? Or oh, the, yeah. Okay, here we hey, go. I want to point something out. Kathy and Wade aren't rich. No. Uh, after he made his first big thing, got nominated in 2015, he went out and bought a great big motorhome. It did nothing but break down on him for years and years. So he spent all his fortune. Bottom line is, they make their living doing what they're doing here today. So I know we've already passed the hat, but I'm gonna ask you folks to dig into your uh, pockets one more time as we uh, get the deacons to come forward, please. And this is what we call a love offering in our church. This man came here and brought his wife uh, out of their love for Christ and their dedication to the ministry they've been called to. So this will this gets them down the road to. Well, wait a minute. This gets you back to Alabama, doesn't it? <laughs> we are the last on this this thing. That's why we got the Christmas special this year. So uh, dig deep, dig hard, and dig in love. And uh, be short. Who's that? Short deacons. No, we got you. Short deacons. <laughs> Apparently, it's tall deacons. Oh, you tall deacons. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this will be a love offering, so play some speed. Apparently. <laughs> Everybody has a great Merry Christmas. And like we said, we normally come after Christmas to see you, but we hope we, until we see you next year or whenever it ends, uh, have a wonderful Christmas and uh, love each other. Amen. 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 Will you sing that with me? Have yourself a merry little Christmas. And I hope you really do. Good. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, your troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. With the old tide From now on your troubles will be miles away. Here we are in the olden days. Happy golden days on the Faithful friends who are dear to us, gathering into us 
once more. Through the years we'll all be together. When the Lord allows, hang a shining star upon the highest bow. his uh, albums back there for sale and he's got uh, Kathy's got some jewelry back there uh, that she actually makes herself and it all goes to getting them back to Alabama so uh, thank you guys thank you Wade thank you Kathy uh, let's pray Heavenly Father Lord Jesus what a blessing it's been this morning uh, to hear from your servant Wade and Kathy Lord as, as they lifted up what you did in real life, Lord, when you sent your son into the world to die. He was the only one that you ever sent into this world just to die. But Lord, because you did that, we're the recipients of that great, great act, Lord. So we want to thank you for that, and we thank you for sending Wade and Kathy to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you guys.